Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about specific learning disorder neurobiology also called as developmental learning disorder neurobiology. I am Dr. Suresh Badudmat, Professor of Psychiatry working at Nimans, Bangalore. In this video, I will be introducing about the specific learning disorder, neurobiology of specific learning disorder and concluding what is the neurobiology. Specific learning disorder is an umbrella term for a group of neurodevelopmental disorders that are typically diagnosed in early school age children, although may not be recognized until adulthood. They are characterized by persistent impairment in at least one of the following. The word persistent is, is very essential. That is, difficulties in reading, writing, expression, mathematics or mixture of above. LCD has a potential for disabling the child's future, adapting for the academics or the school and also to the society. It is a disabling condition. Specific learning disorder in which the normal pattern of skill acquisition are disturbed from the early stage of development. There are three important categories have been named under SLD. Dyslexia, dysgraphia and dyscalculia. This is both in ICD-11 and DSM-5. Let's look into the prevalence of SLD. In, in India, how many are there? At present, American Psychiatric Association talks about the prevalence between somewhere around 5 to 15 percent, depending upon the population size, population studied, and depending upon the screening instrument and the assessment is used. However, in India, meta-analysis has reported 18 percent of our children are suffering from specific learning disorder. What are the co-occurrence and comorbidities? SLD do not come alone. SLD comes in mixture. The child may have reading comprehension difficulties, reading fluency difficulties, spelling accuracy problem, grammar accuracy problem, organizational accuracy, number sense may be difficult difficulty in child, reading accuracy problem may be there, reasoning mathematic, number sense, fluent calculation, all these problems may come in combination or else it may have three or more in combination. And there was a meta-analysis done. This was done in 2022, recently. The title of the study is Language and Specific Learning Disorder in Children with Co-Occurrence with Internalizing and Externalizing Problem. This was meta-analysis of 51 studies, not one or two. These 51 studies clearly reported that Children with SLD has higher prevalence of comorbidity both internalizing and externalizing disorder compared to normal children. Along with, children with language disorder had internalizing disorder more when compared to dyslexia. That means, children with SLD have internalizing disorders such as depression, anxiety, such type of illnesses are very common, externalizing disorder, ADHD, ODD, CD, those kind of situation also seen. That means comorbidity is the rule in SLD. That means 70% of our children with SLD have one more psychiatric diagnosis. It may be ADHD, it may be depression, it may be anxiety disorder. Because of all these things, the child may drop out from the school and the child may end up with substance use, conflict with law, other mental illness, substance use, drug abuse and suicide. Suicide or death by suicide has been less discussed in SLD. Recently, Fuller Thompson published an important article in 2017. Adult with SLD were found to have 46% higher odds of having attempted suicide at some point of time in their lives. Even various Confounding factors were controlled. That means children with SLD may attempt suicide in the future. Not only that, various studies have clearly said that the prevalence of comorbid condition varies from 60 to 30 percent. That means comorbidity is the rule here. However, there has been a hypothesis said if SLD if you do the follow-up of the children, what will happen? In one of the retrospective study which was done, it said that when they followed up the SLD children, 
around 40 to 50 percent developmental illness. Whether is it a comorbid condition which is showing up later or else SLD is a phenotype which is present early and later mental illness develops or else the child has a genotype of mental illness and SLD is the precursor. We don't know whether SLD leads to mental illness or else because the child has mental illness in near future it is going to develop hence it is manifesting on SLD. We do not know at this point of time. But bidirectional in nature, we are able to understand. That means, neurodevelopmental hypothesis has been clearly said that SLD starts in the early childhood and whatever remedial measures, if we do, it is to fulfill the obligations of academics for the child in the current society. But whatever the problems are there, the child continues to have in the mild to moderate form for lifelong. Let's look into the neurobiology of SLD. Let's start with the genetics. From the genetics perspective, SLD is a complex disorder with a strong genetic component. Studies clearly said that heritability of estimates from family and twin studies said the chances are 40 to 70 percent. That means if you see a child with SLD, 40 to 70 percent of the chances one of the parent has SLD. SLD appears to aggregate in families. The relative risk of SLD is substantially higher. Reading disorder 4 to 8 times higher. Dyscalculia or mathematics problem 5 to 10 times higher in first degree relative of individuals with the three difficulties what we have discussed that is SLD. If you look at the genetics studies they have clearly said that it is polygenic nature of SLD points to the existence of multiple causal pathways, much like other neurodevelopmental disorders, where each variant contributes by a small effect to the total phenotypic effects. That means multiple genes are involved and each gene contributes for specific cognitive deficits and multiple of these genes gets involved. That means the child will have problems in various parts of the learning areas. If you look at the cognitive dysfunction, there are studies which have looked into the cognitive deficits in children with SLD. They have found the children has memory function problem, visuomotor perception problem, perceptual tax problem when compared to children without SLD. That means most of the studies has said that memory problem is there, Visual perceptual memory problem is there, perceptual task related problems are there. However, there are some environmental issues, issues regard to perinatal factors, whether there was a good antenatal care for the mother, good nutritional aspect for the mother, whether the mother's health was very good or mother had any endocrine problem, whether the child, whether the mother had any anemia, whether the child at birth asphyxia during birth, childhood infection, malnutrition, exposure of toxin or infection to the child, hormonal imbalance in the mother, all these environmental factors either in the mother or in the child may lead to SLD in children. Further, poor exposure to academics, limited access to schooling, environmental deprivation. The commonest hypothesis is neurodevelopmental disorder which has been accepted by many clinicians and researchers. The dys dyslexia studies have implicated and hypothesized that failure of neuronal migration from the ventricular zone towards the cortical plate has been implicated. Not only that, various studies have said that neuronal migration disturbance during the development leads to the misplacement of neurons likely resulting in changes in white and grey matter. Further, if you take all the studies, neurological, neuroanatomical, biological, both genetics and epigenetics, cognitive information processing problem, linguistic and phonological developmental problems, environmental factors have been implicated in SLD. Let's look into the neuroimaging studies. MRI studies have observed in children, especially with the dyscalculia, comparing to the normal children, the grey matters were less in the areas of SLD 
especially in children with SLD, having posterior parietal cortex, the grey matter is thin, in the intraparietal sulcus, prefrontal cortex and hippocampal area, the grey matter was less in SLD children. Neuroimaging studies in children indicated that frontoparietal network is consistent, consistently active during number processing and arithmetic. That means there is some problems are occurring and which has been identified in neuroimaging studies. Let's look into the various areas implicated in SLD. This is the diagram or the figure which clearly implicates various areas which have been found to have been activated during SLD such as prefrontal cortex which plays a very important role in attention, scanning, executive decision making, further hippocampus with regard to memory, both verbal memory and non-verbal memory, auditory memories, further posterior superior parietal lobe where the arithmetics and calculation is decided intraparietal circus, supramarginal gyrus, angular gyrus and fusiform gyrus have been implicated. Means number processing and or arithmetics. These are the areas implicated in SLD. Let's look into the various pathways which have been implicated. There are two important pathways that is decoding that is the red one and sight recognition that is ventral which is a green one. The red from the frontal lobe the decoding starts with precentral gyrus, supramarginal gyrus, angular gyrus and superior temporal gyrus. This is where the decoding occurs, that the solving of problem occurs through the parietal lobe. That is the reason it is red, hence it is called as dorsal region. With regard to sight recognition, starts from the frontal lobe, goes through the temporal lobe, that is basically memory, there it needs to identify it. What it has seen, that is occipital lobe, from there, medial temporal gyrus. That is both dorsal region and ventral regions play a role. These are the pathways have been implicated in SLD. To conclude, my dear friends, the current body of literature endorses pleiothora of brain regions. That means SLD does not come out of zero. There are certain brain problems the children are suffering. They are not the culprits. It is the brain problem which is resulting in SLD. At present, findings of neurological studies, although they are preliminary, indicate there are brain changes in persons with SLD and there are no specific areas have been implicated at this point of time. But maybe future research may throw a light with regard to SLD. But however, these changes in these results have been indicated because of various reasons. Those reasons are the studies differs in their population, the numbers of children studied, what is the age of the children, whether the children had difficulties versus disorder, whether the remedial measures were given, what was the SLD screening instrument, what was the SLD assessment scale, how the diagnosis was made, what was the standard deviation, is it 1.5 or 2, what was the activation procedure used in MRI, what was the protocol used in MRI, lack of longitudinal data, whether we have repeated the measures, repeated assessments, follow-up studies, whether we have done inter intervention-based studies, they are very few. So the longitudinal studies are very less. Pre- and post-interventional studies are also very few less. That means, we know various cross-sectional studies have said there is something going on in the brain. And at the same time, we need to remember the brain development occurs up to the age of 24 years. That means, you are doing studies in the brain, which is rapidly active, rapidly evolving, neuronal plasticity is occurring, the brain is developing, it is pruning. And this occurs at the different rate in different ch children and different population, depending upon the environment, depending upon the nutrition, depending upon the hormonal status in the body. That means whenever you do the study, in a developing brain, you will not be able to see the same deficits over a period of time. That may deficit may worsen depending upon the brain development or it may improve depending upon the brain development again. Here we need to understand SLD is a neurodevelopmental disorder. It is early onset, 
relatively stable deficit, lifelong in nature. You can see a specific cognitive deficits with regard to learning and academics. It is multifactorial origin. Biopsychosocial cultural factors play important role. And at this point of time, it is difficult to measure with a single instrument across the world. SLD is a multidimensional, requires multisensorial interventional approach for the treatment of SLDs required at this point of time. My dear friends, SLD is a neurodevelopmental disorder having problems in the brain in a specific regions depending upon what type of child having academic problems. At this point of time, we know there are brain changes. We do not know what are those. Thank you very much for giving your valuable time. Stay safe.